World of Warcraft, War of the Scaleborn, now available for pre-order. Nice. So this is the book that uh, was originally scheduled, I think, to come out before Dragonflight. There was a book about Dragonflight, and it was, it was like a narrative book, right? Um, that was due out before Dragonflight that got postponed. Uh, and I believe it's, it's, it's set for November now. Well, let's have a look. Oh, is there like an actual excerpt as well? Uh, Courtney Alameda is a novelist, comic book writer, and lifelong gamer. After almost 15 years of writing professionally, there are a few mediums, genres, and forms Courtney hasn't had the chance to work in, though the no novel remains her favorite. She started playing World of Warcraft in 2015 and has been a denizen of Azeroth ever since. Born and raised in San Francisco Bay Area, she now resides in the Northwest United States with her husband. One Welsh corgi, good choice. Good girl, she's going to be all right. Two cats, three library rooms, and whatever monsters lurk in the rural darkness around her home. Arriving October 31st, so basically November. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Is Golden no longer writing the WoW books? So, uh, Christy Golden is, like, hard at work. She's an official member of the WoW team now. Or the, the, the Blizzard team, right? Uh... I, I'm only saying this because I know she talks about it on her Twitter as well, but she's got like a really bad finger. Apart from the fact she writes for all franchises now, like she's been having issues for like the last couple of years with her finger. Like I think she broke a finger and actually has had a big impact on her writing in terms of like just sheer output, I'd imagine, or certainly did for a bit. I, I hope it's all better now. I haven't spoken for, to her for a while. Um... But yeah, but I, I don't think that's got anything to do with it. I, th I think that's, uh, I don't think that's got anything to do with anything. Um, maybe for a while back there it did. But yeah, she, she's like on everything now. They would get her in specifically for WoW stuff before, but now she's like an employee of Blizz Blizzard Entertainment and she, she, she works on everything. So, um, and also I think it's cool to have different people writing the novels. Uh, I thought Shadows Rising was a really good Delve into the world of dragons from before the events of World of Warcraft Dragonflight in this exciting prequel. A new light will shine on the story of the War of the Dragons and the impact it's had on the very future of the Dragonflights. When the world was young, all life shook before the might of Galakrond, a massive primal dragon whose hunger could not be sated. Five primal dragons rose valiantly beside the titan forge to keep a tear to combat this threat. Though the fight was desperate, Galakrond fell by their teeth and talons and a massive rock that they stuffed in his mouth. I've got this horrible feeling the Blizz are trying to retcon, soft retcon, the massive boulder that they put in Galakrond's mouth, and I will not stand for that shit. Never forget the massive fucking boulder that they smashed into Galakron's mouth, okay? The Titans gifted Noz Dormu, Ysera, Alexstrasza, Malagos, and Neltharion with order magic, transforming them into the Aspects, powerful dragons with command of time, nature, life, magic, even the earth itself. Other primal dragons followed them on their path, and imbued with the Titans' power, the dragonflights rose to shape the world and serve the Aspects. That is the tale the dragonflights have always told. But it is not the whole story. For while the Dragon Queen and her flight set to reshaping Azeroth, not all dragonkind sees order magic as a gift. Spurning the Titan's inheritance, a group of rebel primal dragons drink deep from the elemental powers of the planet and are reborn as the Incarnates. Led by Eridicron, the Incarnates believe that dragonkind should be subservient to no one. They formed a rebellion against the Aspects and they are all... Uh, and... Uh, uh, and they are, and all, what they are, and all they stand for. Phew, sorry about that. Despite the efforts of the Dragon Queen Alexstrasza and her primal friend Virenoth to preserve peace. Oh, oh. What have people been saying? What's the common theory in WoW circles before this? Was that Virenoth might come, end up coming onto our side? That's what the community's been saying ever since Virenoth popped up. Probably just because she's a girl, right? But they're like... Got a feeling Virenoth might end up on our side, right? Well, this certainly doesn't work against that, does it? The efforts of the Dragon Queen Alexstrasza and her primal friend Virenoth to preserve the peace, both sides slip closer to violence, as dragons are forced to choose a side or be swept up in the growing conflict. With battle lines and allegiances drawn, the war amongst dragonkind shakes the foundations of the world. Both sides realize they will have to make sacrifices to secure the future of their kind. Sacrifices! 
that will cascade through the ages. Sounds awesome. Sounds great. Now, I... I don't think this is why the book... This is definitely the book that was originally due to come out before Dragonflight. Definitely, 100%. I don't think this is the reason it was postponed. But I'm glad it was, because I think it's more interesting to get this book a year into Dragonflight than before Dragonflight. I think it's been interesting to let us see the incarnates and get a measure of the incarnates and learn about the incarnates kind of on our own terms for a little bit rather than just get it all, it all explained before the expansion even starts right and i think that combats the whole law in a book not in the game thing as well because now i i think this this book comes out before the uh the expansion and you've got a genuine case where you're like, yeah, I, I, I've just had like this whole new baddies kind of introduced in a book. And now they're the baddies of the expansion. And I totally get that. I would, I, would, I would say that would be bad and annoying. And having it come out a year later where, you know, we've, we've been able to be introduced to the baddies in game, learn a lot about them and the war and kind of see flashbacks of it and introduce the characters over the course of like two patches... That makes it a lot more interesting and, and means that, you know, the lore in this book is very much more complementary to what we've seen in the game rather than just flat out telling us shit. What does drink deep from the elemental powers of the planet mean? Elemental lords? Well, I think so. You know I think that. I don't see what else it could possibly be with the incarnates apart from the fact that they got empowered by the elemental lords. And therefore, even though this is something no one talks about, the most obvious end game for Eridicron and Viranoth is that they want to release the Elemental Lords from the Elemental Plane. That would be the most obvious super objective for Eridicron. No one talks about it because I'm pretty sure no one wants it to happen. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm, I'm sure like, the reason people don't talk about this is not because no one's thought of it, but because it's like, I just don't want to, I just don't want that to happen. So I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> Uh, so Alex Strauss is going to do something in the past that Vernoth is going to view as absolutely traitorous and have to be locked up. Then 10,000 years later, they kiss and make up over the misunderstanding. I don't think Vernoth will end up on our side. I've said this before. I think Vernoth is clearly being set up as the most sympathetic one. You know, Sylvanas got a very sympathetic reading in the Sylvanas book in Shadowlands, right? And she didn't end up on our side. Well, she kind of did, but not really. I think Vernoth is going to be very much more a, an Ashara-style character, right? Where it's like, all right, I admit I might have been wrong, okay? I will now stop trying to kill you, but just so you know, we're not friends still. You know? This thing where she's not like, kind of explicitly and specifically an antagonist but you know she she's not our friend like you know and you know it, it doesn't mean that it sounds like a redemption arc doesn't it it sounds like a redemption arc i bet we read about what happened in that huge tower in the azure span in this book ah i bet you we do i bet you we do yeah yeah totally i bet you we do and that art is incredible. And the art is uh, Viranoth and Alex Straza as well, isn't it? Yeah, like, I feel like the book will be telling the story of Viranoth, uh, Iridicron, like, working behind the scenes to subtly manipulate Viranoth and kind of keep things from her, to keep her on side. Seems likely, doesn't it? Yeah, amazing art. I love it. So good.